Hey everyone, welcome back to Code Throw. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to add this icon to your action bar and spellbook. And let's continue this series. This is part two of our action bar and spellbook using ACF. And let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is in my content folder, I'm just going to type for spell and you're going to see that ACF already comes with quite a few spells. And if I hold control and click B, it'll navigate me to the folder it's in. So it's in full sample blueprints, actions, action BP, and there's a spells folder. And we're already giving a we're already given a wide variety of spells that we can use into our objects. So for example, for this tutorial, I'll be using that fire quake action, which just shoots a fireball in front of us. So there's two that we need to really look into, which is ACF fire quake action BP. So I'll double click to open that up and the fire quake actor BP. So now when I hit open full blueprint for both of these, you're going to see that it already has quite a few configurations set up. Essentially what our spell is doing is that we're going to be calling an actor called fire quake actor BP inside our fire quake action. And the action BP is actually what's going to be called because this is going to, we're going to have to make a class reference to this in our UI in order to get its information. So for example, if we called defaults of this, we'll get all of these, which is going to be damage actor class, duration, interval, radius, direction type. And we can also open this up for the action config. And we're going to have to break apart our details in order to get an action icon so that we can set this icon to our hotbar. That may be a boatload of information, but let's just go ahead and get started. So I'll go back to my AC map and actually what I'm going to do first is just drag in an icon so there's already a couple decals for your spell targeting system for AOE spells and stuff but I'm just going to go on Google and look for a random fireball icon so I found one here I'm just going to drag this in and I'll just leave it here just so I can see it I'm just going to drag in that PNG here and it's already going to be imported as a texture and I'll hit control shift save or control shift S to save all. And I'm gonna double click to open my action bar slots, widget blueprint, and there are a few things I wanna do. First, I'm gonna rename these because these naming conventions are not really descriptive. I don't really know what's going on with these. So this button will actually be a cast button. So something that'll click to activate this. Uh, this image will be my ability icon image. And this progress bar will be our cooldown. So I'm just gonna call this cool cooldown bar and I'll hit compile and save. Another thing we need to do is on the cooldown bar, we're going to have to change this background fill. So I'm going to drop down style, open up background image and change this draw as to none. This is how our icon doesn't look distorted. And for the ability icon image, and now you'll see that when I don't have a cooldown, it's just going to look like a solid gray square, which is exactly what we're looking for. So I'll just leave this at zero for now and hit compile and save. And next, what I want to do is actually go into the graph of this of this action bar slots widget blueprint. So now while I'm in the, of the graph, we're gonna add some things to our event pre-construct. So in our variables, I'm gonna hit add and we're gonna add something called an ability class, which is gonna reference the class of our AC of fire, quake, action, and actor. So in this case, I'm gonna look at the parent of our AC of fire, quake, action, and you can see that the parent class is AC of base action. So we don't want to actually get the object itself, but we want to reference the class in order to load its defaults. So I'm going to look for the ACF base action and hover over it and click class reference. And now I'm going to drag this in and do get ability class, right click this and convert to a validated get. And this is just so we can set the visibility of our icon image, whether it's on your hotbar or not. So I'm going to connect the execution pin from event preconstruct to the get. And now we want to add two set visibility nodes like so. And we're going to do visible for the top one and hidden for the bottom one. And now I'm going to drag out my ability icon variable and I'll make some more space. And I'm going to connect it to both the targets of each of these. And of course, the top one, it's going to be visible when it's valid and it's going to be hidden when it's not valid. And as for the ability class, we're going to want to reference. We're not going to make a specific UI or button in every single time. Every time we have an ability, we want it to be pretty dynamic. So in order to just get whatever we're referencing, which is going to get our ACF base action in this case, I'm going to drag out ability class and get class default. And now when we add this, we see things like action config, character owner, and a montage, and so on. But we don't see anything to set our actual icon, which is the whole point of setting it over here. And it looks like I actually didn't set it here. So I need to set that here. Yeah, I guess I just dragged in the image and didn't set it. So I'm just going to look for that fire icon just like that and hit compile and save. But now the question is, how do we get this action icon to show up as our slot? So under the ACF tab, we already see that our thumbnail or our icon is in an action config. And we also notice that here because that is one of the class defaults. All we need to do is drag this out and break action config. 
And this is just so we can get every single piece separated. So as you'll see, it'll say action cost, requirements, required level, and so on. And down here we see action icon. And all those variables match the one we have here. So action cost, requirements, level, so on, cooldown time, etc. And we'll see our action icon just like this. Now I'm going to copy paste the ability icon over here. And what I want to do is get a set brush from texture. And this is going to select our texture asset to our ability icon. So we can just plug in our ability icon into this texture node. And this will set our action icon to our ability. And now we want to check that if ability class is valid, we're going to set the visibility to visible of the action icon or the ability icon. And then we're going to plug this in. So it's going to turn true. And then it's going to get that icon from our action config in our ability class by referencing that action icon. And now after we set that up, we're going to click on ability class and make sure that it's instance editable and expose on spawn. And this is so that it's visible to our UI that we can select it. So now when I hit compile and save, I can go back to my ultimate map and go to my ACF ultimate HUD class or full sample, whichever one you're using, and then select my WBP ultimate HUD to open this up. And now I'm just going to select this first icon over here. And you will see that on the right, there's an option to select ability class under our defaults. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to select that Firequake action BP. And now you'll see that the icon is here. And we'll fix up some of the UI in a later video, but as le at least we can get the icon to show up and it is correctly referencing our ACF Firequake action blueprint. And when I hit play, you'll see that I can see the same icon on my ability bar right now. And that concludes our action bar and spellbook part two. Thanks for watching Code to Grow. Like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next, and I'll see you in the next video. Currently, if we click on this, it's not going to do anything, but at least we do have the data stored in this action bar.